So hey ladies and gentlemen, today I got another video for you today. So I realized that the more the pandemic is going on, I see that most of my friends, not all of them, at least those that are coming from my background, my generation, I'm not sure I'm boomer, but I'm assume I'm almost there. Got the proof. I got the proof. And they're not having a bad time. You know, it's like, they can see the moment they are in, but they don't, they can't disconnect from that moment because there's a future. It will wash away. It will blow away. And it's like they are, they are stuck in time. I am 25 and I have no friends. Um, I guess as a kid, I was always... I never had an issue socializing. I was, I was almost like the, I was almost like the popular kid. Like through high school, I was, I was friends. I never fit in. Like everybody knew of me, but I never really fit in. I knew the popular, I guess the, like you had the popular kids and then you had the kids that just were not popular or the nerds. And I knew I was friends with both of like the cliques. I never, like I knew them both, but I never was close with any of them. I I remember because we, when I go to lunch one day at high school, I was wondering, I was like, where, where am I gonna sit? They are missing specific stuff. Usually they're held by specific people to reach out. They get pushed in a direction, but when they are set alone, I mean, it, it sounds kind of cruel, It's but it's like, you leave a dog at the gas station. He has no idea. When I was in that situation, I step out. I just go immediately with the person that I knew I could hang out the most. Usually talking about games, the guys that made me laugh the most. But that was easy because it was like one or two per people. But now... The fact that you have like social media and all these things and you have to contact a bunch of people at the same time. It's so taxing that you don't do it with everybody at the same time. But the fact that you don't do it with everybody at the same time, you don't create the bond. But I have two specific friends. That's it. And I don't talk to them every time. Whenever I speak to them, it's like there is no test. I can look back that with this dude, I was hanging out 24 seven. I went to his house. I know his parents. I knew his sister. I knew his mom. They knew what I like to eat. I could go sleep at their house whenever I could. I'm talking about Curacao, like in the eighties, nineties, people are quite strict. Like, Where are you going? Because there wasn't like a phone that you could follow everybody. So people just let us go. And you just have to manage when shit gets real. But for me, it would be so horrible to be so lost without any friends. I don't even want to know how to imagine that. I felt alone because my friends were busy, but that I don't know where I want to go. Oof. And I started to notice this once I turned about 23. At 23, I really started to notice that I was not I was not that good at socializing or my social skills were going down. You know, through high school, my skills were, were okay. I was able to talk and laugh and you know, interact. I think he became self-aware, just like certain guys become freaking goofy when they like a girl because you're trying to impress. So instead of acting naturally, they actually try to act in a way to be perceived well. And honestly, at that age, when everybody is all about first impression and when you seem a little too humble, it kind of looks weird. I don't think he sucks. He doesn't realize how different he looks when he's not natural. I remember though, 23, I really started to take notice that my skills were just, they were not there. I was not able to, you know, click with couldn't bond with somebody I couldn't make a connection with different people and I once I started to take notice of this I started it started getting worse I noticed once I started noticing it, it's like it started getting quite a bit worse told you told you 
it, because he started getting notice of it. He doesn't know how to repair it, but that's the problem. If you have never bonded with anybody, if you didn't do it since small, like I always had the best friend. When I was like four to five years old, I had my best friend at the swing. Eight, I had this dude that has the father that was like super criminal, but we could get along super well. When I was 10, I had this black kid with a huge head. 11, I had this group of cool kids. And it's like I kept jumping, 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 upgrading, changing. Because whenever I was good friends with somebody, they switched classes and I could not see them. Some of my friends usually, they moved to a different country. They moved to Holland. And I was like, oh man, I lost my best friend. Let's do it again. It's like a reset. Mario Bros. You know, you got to play the whole freaking game again. And I got really good at it. And with this person, I would do everything. Eat, drink, piss. Um, yeah, piss. We go to the bathroom. He goes to the stall. I go to the other one. Because we had to cover each other. Because sometimes when you go pee pee, somebody grabs you on the side. And they start shaking you. And they warn you, watch out, watch out, they're coming. So there's, there's always this cool teamwork, right? But... If you never had to do it and you're just a cool kid and people just compliment you, hi man, what's up? What fun? Hadi, hada, hada. And you need to make a bond? Oof. And I was wondering, I was like, what, you know, what is going on with me? Like, I, I was like, I'm always, I was always okay. Like, why, I, I can't, do I have anxiety or social anxiety? Like, I didn't even know what, what these things were until I started like midway through the, the, uh, my, uh, being 23, I, I started looking up you know what what is the cause of this and i like came across anxiety and uh, social anxiety and lo and behold since 23 it has done nothing but it's just gotten worse so much so that i you know i've just that's like kind of been my life goal lately is like how what can i do to overcome this social anxiety thing that i have and you know through the uh, the recommendation of my doctor, he referred me to another doctor that would be willing to, you know, help me out through, coach me through different medications. And I, I tried a bunch of different medications. I know I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying that you have to do it. So just don't take my word as face value. I'm just going to tell you how I kind of handled my situation with the same things. I didn't know how to be friends with everybody because I just knew, I just, I just didn't know how I had the approach. But whenever I was with people that can break the ice because they're good at talking, I was the most best person that everybody wants to be around. So that is was the only thing I needed that break, you know. So usually I hanged out with my friends' friends, my family's friends, and that usually with practice I just keep breaking the ice, breaking the ice. I'm not, if you have to use medication, hey, do you, do you. I, I don't like medication. I come from a generation. We don't like any medication because it feels like a trap. But for me, the fact that they just kept pushing me and I put myself out there and don't feel ashamed when people fail, it's like a, a player. The girls don't like you. They keep saying no, no, no. And one might say yes. Guess what? That's why they get good at it. They keep failing. Their ego get dumb, dumb, dumb. And once time it work, it get boosted. So in this situation, you have to do your own thing. You know, start talking to people. And usually don't force yourself. Make it easy. Go to something that you like. A club for games or whatever. Um, I jumped on. It was like Prozac or Zoloft. It was one of one of them and i remember taking it i it was like two or three doses in two or three days in i was like having like really weird motivation issues like my motivation just like took a took a hit and went down to the tank i was like what the heck and i started looking it up like doing as much research as i can like i already did some research on it before but i did more research on it i was like i'm i can't do this anymore like I, this the motivation i lost from it was not worth it if the reaction of others is what's triggering you to be anxiety, turning them off is an interesting solution the way he's saying that process makes him feel very demotivated. But in my experience also, when I was suffering from depression, I thought, you know what? The world is so difficult. I can just relax, drink at home, chill and nothing happens but guess what if nothing happens you will not be motivated to do anything anyway 
you would feel useless. So the only thing you want to do is drink more and fall asleep as soon as possible. I mean, in the beginning it was actually people I didn't know, but as time got on it got worse and it was even with people I, I knew, I would get this rush over me. I don't know, if you guys have social anxiety, you know exactly what this is. But you talk to somebody and like, you get this rush over you and it's just like slap in the face. Like, what are you even talking to me about? Like. You're having a full-fledged conversation and you're just trying to hold on for dear life, like hoping you just don't explode. Yes, we've all been there. But you know what most people I don't realize is why do you believe you have to do that? You, you know what's the most beautiful I like to hear when I am with specific people? They're like, isn't this silence comfortable? And because these are usually people that suffer from anxiety. They, they are done with impressing and they get this anxiety feeling, right? Just be able to talk about anything random. They feel so much comfortable and they can talk about anything. But usually it comes out natural because somebody is really interested in what your story is. Not because you need to impress them. If you need to impress somebody to make them a friend, you're already on a bad start. Has anything interesting happened to you this last few days? What do you mean? I don't know. I like to hear people talk about the stuff they experienced. You don't have to push it. But usually if we're with a co-worker, that's what we do. What have you been up to? My mom passed away. Really? How was she? What kind of person was she? Most people wouldn't ask that question. I would. They're like, they're like huh? Why would you ask something like that? I'm like, well... I'm curious what kind of that person it is. Why would you miss her? Is she a nice person? What does she do for you? And usually people want to talk about this stuff. I want to talk about stuff. When somebody asked me that question, I was so happy I could tell this person stuff about my mom. You're not there to impress them, but it doesn't mean you have to talk about yourself. You can just ask stuff about them. Who doesn't like to talk about themselves? And usually when you are open about that, most of the time, these people themselves will start asking about yourself. And then you feel comfortable talking about it. And it's like a beautiful, not a circle of doom, but as I said, a circle of love. And it feels so good. That rush is horrible, though. I, I, I hate that feeling. Nothing I've tried other than, like, benzapines. Like, a, you know, clonzepam, I've tried those. Those are... I mean, shit, if I could live like that, like, that amount of calm I would be able to make many friends but I can't it's not sustainable so lo and behold I have no friends <laughs> and it's like it's getting harder as I get older you know it's it's worrying it's scary too because I've we I have to go out and get a job now like a big boy job the world is not fair you have to make connections in order to get a job and like I want to be successful I want to if I could help people and make money at the same time, that would be awesome. Uh, when I went to this interview, it was the best. It was the most chill day ever. I was just walking with my music, super chill. I was really in the mood like, I don't care if I get a job. I'm just going to be my jolly self. And they didn't hire me because I was qualified. They just hired me because I was super honest. They said, what are you bad? What, what are you good at? I told them, well, I don't think I'm really good, but I, I really suck at this, but I improve so much within a certain amount of years, you know? And they actually look at me like, so you don't have like a very good quality? I says, no, but I do improve. And th that's when usually my anxiety went away also. I, I am brutally honest in the beginning. And it surprises you how much trust and respect you get from people when you're brutally honest, but you just work on your delivery. I remember the first time I realized I could have a freaking normal conversation with a girl. It's when we both were playing Tekken. And for some reason, we had the best conversation in my life because we were just beating each other up. And whatever we beat each other with, we remembered how somebody hit us in the head or how we hit our knee and all those stuff. And it was a, such a comfortable conversation. And it was the most beautiful girl that all the guys wanted to dance with in a disco, right? Like a disco. Everybody, 
do dancing and everything there i am super geeky in the corner playing a fighting game on the machine and this girl was hey i want to play with you but then but then but then and it was so chill i think people would be surprised how relaxing and normal they could react from a third person perspective when they don't know they're trying to impress another person but with time i realized i had to work it out because nobody else is gonna help you so if you have a friend that can at least assist you in that all i'm gonna say dude hold on to that person invest in that person because usually when this person grows with your investment you're gonna grow with him because trust me you don't want to grow alone 100 percent. if you have social anxiety i mean it, to the extent that i have it um people notice it on you they know it on you because i can feel it like i can feel i can feel them knowing i have it like and that's i don't i don't agree with everybody that says that maybe you know people other people don't worry about it. like yeah they, i think i mean they notice and that's the worst part is that is true that is true they will notice that but you know what if they're gonna notice it anyway maybe you should be yourself more anyway it's like ah, shit. and like making eye contact is like hard <laughs> you know like there's a i mean it's just a, it sucks if you have social anxiety you know exactly what i'm talking about i'm 25 now and this has been going on for you know two and a half years that this has really been taking a toll on my life and it sucks because I have no friends now after college I mean even back in college I went to I went to Mizzou and I ended up joining a fraternity and even at the fraternity that's I like it wasn't really me like doing that was not really me but I really wanted to party and it's hard for guys to party if you're not in a fraternity and I remember I joined a fraternity and it was just like I did not fit in with anybody there it was I want to be social but I'm an introvert at the same time it's it's contradicting yourself i know but hard to explain makes perfect sense i'm not an introvert let's just say i would like to do all my stuff at home with friends does that make sense i i never understood why but whenever you look how i would speak i speak a little weird or something like that but if i get pissed like very pissed I look you straight in the eye and I can become very articulate and it scares people. It's like I'm a very weird bipolar. And that's when I realized that I have the ability to do the stuff that I have to do, but I need to regulate myself to be a better person. I'm not saying that he's wrong. What he's experiencing, it's true. He has to handle this whole situation by himself. But with time and practice, or maybe when he says, I'm about to explode, maybe that needs to happen. But it must be justified. He must explode in a way that he has to defend himself in the aggressive situation. Not when he's going to talk to a girl because everyone is going to be like, whoo, you know. Because making connections with people is, gosh, it's the best feeling ever. And I care so much about that because I... I grew up kind of alone, like I didn't really have, you know, brothers or sisters, and I just... I just think we just limit ourselves also with who we consider our friends, and at what age we can make a best friend. I know a very old man that just met a person now when he's in his 70s, and he told me he was so happy with this person because they can finally click. He never had such a good friend since he was like, yeah, 12 years old. I didn't have a lot of friends. I was always the awkward person, you know? And I can say now till I've reached my 30 something, I haven't mastered my skills. Now, I'm fun at parties, let's just say that. Don't get me wrong, my cosa quita bon. Put the fire na mi blonde, kush hash purple skunk, criollo, colombici, jam jam, turlo, keta verde, ta welcome.